Hello, good morning to my dear students. How are you? This is our channel, Physics Gallery, Ashab Inu. Okay, and today we are going to the eighth lecture of our motion in a plane surface. And today we are going to study the motion in plane surface. Till now, we were discussing only vectors. We were discussing vectors. Vectors for our motion in plane surface. Okay. So, today we have to discuss about our projectile motion. The first topic is projectile motion. Today we are going to discuss our projectile motion. Okay. So, this is the first example of motion in a plane surface, motion in two dimension. Clear? So, we are going to discuss what is a projectile motion. We can say, suppose a ball is on a ground. There is a ball in a ground. Okay. And suddenly, we go to that ground and kick that ball. What happens? We had kicked the ball. So, how we kick a ball? We kick a ball to this direction so that it undergoes a parabolic path and comes to the ground like this. So, this is kicking. Okay. So, here what happens? A ball on the ground is provided an initial velocity. We had provided an initial velocity u to the ball. How we provided that initial velocity? By making an angle theta to the ground. By making an angle theta to the ground. Okay, correct? So, a body is projected with an initial velocity u, making an angle theta to the ground and thereafter, how it moves or kicking, it moves upward. But after some time, we can see the ball moves downward. What does it mean? Why, why the ball which is moving upward comes to the ground after some time? Because of the effect of gravity. Why? Because of the effect of gravity. That is, after kicking, kicking means providing an initial velocity to you, making an angle theta to the ground. Thereafter, the ball or the body moves purely under the influence of gravity. Okay. Okay, so what happens? A ball is projected with an initial velocity u, making an angle theta to the ground and thereafter it moves under the influence of gravity. Thereafter it moves under the influence of gravity. Okay, and such a body is called as a projectile. Such a body is called as a projectile and its motion is called as a projectile motion. So what is a projectile and projectile motion? How to say a body, you may write, a body which is projected with an initial velocity u, making an angle theta to the ground and thereafter it moves under the influence of gravity. Thereafter it moves under the influence of gravity. It's called as a projectile. That body is called as a projectile and its motion is said to be projectile motion. Clear? So, now we know what is projectile and projectile motion. Okay. Okay. Now, we had provided an initial velocity u to this body, making an angle theta to the ground. If so, we know how to resolve this initial velocity u. We can take one component in this direction and other component in th this direction. Do you know how to resolve? Please go to the topic vector, then you will get the resolution of vectors. There we have discussed the resolution in detail. Okay, so when this u is the result, we get ux in horizontal direction and uy in vertical direction, vertically upward direction. Okay, when u is the result, we get two perpendicular components, ux along the horizontal direction and uy along the vertical direction. Where ux is equal to, tell me, adjacent component is always cos component and opposite component is always sine component. So we can write ux is equal to u cos theta and uy is equal to u sine theta. Clear? 
Okay, so the initial velocity may be resolved into two. ux is equal to u cos theta and uy is equal to u sin theta. Okay, so we have resolved the initial velocity. Then we had said the body thereafter moves under the influence of gravity. The body is purely moving under the influence of gravity. So, what happens to the component u cos theta due to the effect of gravity? u cos theta is in horizontal direction like this. I am moving in this direction. Okay. When I move in horizontal direction, when you ride a bicycle in horizontal direction, there is gravity. That's why you are touching in the ground. There is gravity, surely. But whether the gravity reduces or increases your speed, whether the gravity affects your speed, when you ride a bicycle in horizontal direction, that is through a road, whether the gravity will pull towards you, towards the downward direction and you fell down due to the effect of gravity, whether you fell down, whether your speed, horizontal speed decreases due to the effect of, effect of gravity, never. That is the speciality. There is gravity in horizontal motion, but due to the effect of gravity, where our speed doesn't change us. It means that there is no effect, even though there is gravity, there is no effect of gravity in horizontal direction. In horizontal direction, there is no effect of gravity. There is no effect of gravity in horizontal direction. So, u cos theta remains if there is no factor to affect it. The only factor is gravity. And there is no effect of gravity in horizontal direction. So, what happens? It remains constant. It remains constant throughout the motion. Clear? So, what happens to the u cos theta? It remains constant throughout the motion. Okay? Clear? So, when the initial velocity u is resolved into horizontal and vertical components, when we considering the horizontal component, there is no effect of gravity in horizontal axis. Okay, so what happens? U cos theta remains constant throughout the motion. Throughout the motion of the projectile. Okay, whereas what happens to U sine theta which is in upward direction? Tell me, if you throw a ball in vertically upward direction with certain velocity, whether that velocity remains constant throughout its motion and it moves, whether it up, always up? No, as it moves up, what happens? The velocity begins to decrease due to the effect of gravity. There is the effect of gravity in vertical motion. Okay. So we can write here, there is, there is the effect of gravity, the effect of gravity. Can you see this? Hoping, yes. There is the effect of gravity in vertical direction. So what happens? So u sin theta, so u sin theta begins to decrease, begins to decrease. As decrease as it moves up. It begins to decrease as it moves up. Clear? So what happens to u sine theta? U sine theta begins to decrease as it moves up. Clear? Okay. So we have said what is a projectile? A body which is initially thrown with the velocity u making an angle theta to the ground. And thereafter it moves under the influence of gravity. Clear? This initial velocity can be resolved. Thereafter, on examining the motion, we are going through each and every points in the motion. Starting point, the initial velocity u making an angle theta to the horizontal. So, it can be resolved into ux and uy. ux is equal to u cos theta in horizontal direction and uy is equal to u sin theta in vertically upward direction. Okay. And we said the motion is purely under the influence of gravity, neglecting air resistance. Okay, the motion is purely under the influence of gravity. So, what happens to your cos theta due to the effect of gravity? There is gravity, but there is no effect of gravity in horizontal direction. In horizontal direction, there is no effect of gravity. So, it remains constant throughout the motion. U cos theta remains constant throughout the motion. Why? Because the only factor is gravity. And the gravity cannot do anything in horizontal motion of a body. 
So it doesn't change as the horizontal velocity. U cos theta remains constant throughout the motion. Whereas U sin theta, vertically upward direction, there is the effect of gravity in vertically upward direction. So what happens as the body moves up, U sin theta begins to decrease. Yes, we know as it moves up, as a ball moves up, what happens? The vertical component of the velocity vector, the vertical velocity decreases. Clear? So, whether this much of topic is clear to you? Hope it. Yes. Now, the ball reaches to this point. The ball reaches at this point. Okay. What is the direction of velocity vector now after traveling from this point to this point? Whether the velocity is u itself? No. It is v now. What is the velocity? V now. V can be resolved into two. Okay. Vx and Vy. V can also be resolved into two. Vx in horizontal direction and Vy in the vertical direction. Okay. Clear? So can you tell me what is the value of this Vx and Vy? Can you say what is Vx? Whether your answer is Vx is equal to V cos theta. Whether your answer is Vx is equal to V cos theta, if so, it is wrong. Why? Because this angle is not theta. This was, initial angle was theta. Here there is a new angle. We don't know what is that angle now. This angle is not theta. Take it as alpha now. As it moves up, what happens? The horizontal angle. The angle made by the velocity vector to the horizontal decreases. Okay. Okay, that's why on reaching here, what is the direction of velocity vector? Tangent. Now this becomes the velocity. Okay, so initially this, this was theta this much. But as it moves up, it decreases. And at the top, it becomes pure horizontal. Therefore, at each and every point of the motion, angle theta changes. Therefore, this is not theta. This is alpha which we don't know what is that alpha, then how can we write V x as V cos theta, whether this is correct? No. Then how can we write, tell me, is there any other form, any other way to write V x? Yes, we had written that the horizontal component of velocity vector doesn't change us because there is no effect of gravity. U cos theta remains constant throughout the motion. U cos theta remains constant throughout the motion. Clear? That means this Vx can also be written as U cos theta itself, not V cos theta, but it is the initial velocity itself, velocity in horizontal direction itself, it is U cos theta. Correct? Okay. And what happens to Vy? Is there any effect of gravity in vertical? Yes, there is the effect of gravity in vertical direction. So, u sine theta begins to decrease as it moves up. According to which equation? In our motion in straight line, we have already discussed what about the equation for vertically upward motion. V is equal to u minus vt. Now, the components are only vertical. Y means y-axis component. Vy is equal to uy minus gt. Okay. Or we can write Vy is equal to what was used Y initial velocity in vertical component was vertical axis was u sine theta minus gt. Okay. So we can write Vy is equal to clear? That equation is familiar to us. So the equation becomes u sine theta minus gt. U, <coughs> u sine this, sorry u sine theta minus gt and this is the velocity vector. <coughs> Sorry. So what happens to our velocity vector p? It is resolved into two. After t seconds, the body reaches at this point where the velocity vector can be resolved into two. Vx is equal to u cos theta itself because the horizontal component of initial velocity vector doesn't change as with the time because there is no effect of gravity. Whereas the vertical component decreases and after t seconds it becomes u sine theta minus gt. From which equation? V is equal to u minus at. Retardation. Okay. That is u plus at and the 
acceleration is provided by minus g because it is moving upward. Clear? Okay, hoping this much is clear. Now, the ball reaches to this position. Here, the velocity vector is this. The tangent is this. Which is purely in horizontal axis. Clear? The tangent at this point is towards right. Okay, so the velocity vector, the whole velocity vector is towards right. That is horizontal axis, which we have written as Vx. And is there any change in the Vx? No, u cos theta itself. It is u cos theta itself. Clear? It is u cos theta itself. And where is Vy? What happens to the vertical component at the maximum height? Tell me. U sin theta begins to decrease, 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 decrease. And at the maximum height, the vertical component of velocity decreases to zero. That's why there is no vertical velocity. So the body cannot move further up. Clear? Because Vy becomes zero. Is it clear? Okay. Now... The ball reaches to this point. The ball reaches here. Now this is the direction of velocity vector. Which can be resolved into. Two like this. This is Vx. And this is Vy now. Vx no change. Because no effect of gravity remains constant throughout the motion. It is u cos theta itself. And what about Vy? What about Vy? Vy is equal to here when the ball moves up, when the ball moves up, retardation due to gravity occurs. But as the ball begins to move down from here to here, acceleration, gravity provides acceleration. Okay. Okay. So the velocity begins to increase. So the velocity begins to increase. So Vy may be written as 0 plus g into t dash where t dash is this much time. Here to here position is taken as t dash. Clear? Here the velocity was 0. Thereafter the body begins to accelerate. From this point to this point the velocity increases by g t dash where t dash is the distance from maximum height to this point. Clear. If this t dash is not provided, suppose the total time of flight up to this point is provided, this point to this point, then whether can you write this equation as Vy is equal to 0 plus gt? No. If t is the total time of projection, projection up to this point, up to this point. Okay. Listen. You have to be careful. What we are taking. There are two times here. First time. From maximum height to this point. If that time is given. You may directly take this as. Vy is equal to. Initial. This point velocity is 0. 0 plus g into t dash. This time. But the. It is very rare to obtain this time. The common time given will be after t seconds of projection. After t seconds of projection, whether that t is this t, no. That t is from this point, initial point. After t seconds of projection, total time of projection. So, here to here time is t. Then can you write it as 0 plus g into t? No. Because when you take the total time of projection, the initial velocity is not zero. The initial velocity is u sine theta, which is in upward direction. So you may write the initial velocity of the body u sine theta, but u sine theta upward, gravity downward, minus g into total time of projection, t seconds after projection. Is this is clear? Here, Vy can be written in two form. Important, important, you have to decide. Vy can be written in two form. First one, 0 plus g 
0 plus g into t dash. Okay. Or u sin theta minus g t. Okay. What, uh, when we take this equation, when maximum height to this point time is given, the time interval between maximum height to reach this point is given, then the equation is 0 plus dt dash, only acceleration. But if t is the total time of projection up to this point, then you have to take this initial velocity. Here the vertical velocity is u sin theta upward direction and the total time is this where the acceleration due to gravity is negative g downward apply the sign convention u sin theta at the same time up and down occurs so u sin theta upward positive g downward negative you have to put the sign convention like this okay clear but you don't have to fear both of them will have the same value both of them will have the same magnitude no doubt Either you take 0 plus g into this much t dash or you take u sin theta minus g into this much time t. The magnitude of the velocity vector will be same direction downward. Okay, clear. The magnitude will be same, no doubt. Direction is opposite, so you will get a minus sign here. Okay, clear. Okay, so you may take either 0 plus g into t dash here or u sin theta minus g into total time after projection. Clear? Both of them are correct and both will have the same value. And, and that is if this is 0 meter per second, 10 meter per second, 20, 30, 40, 50 and so on, it increases. Both of them will keep the same magnitude. Now, the ball reaches at the ground. At the, at the point of fall, this is the direction of velocity vector, which may be resolved into two, Vx and Vy. Now, Vx is equal to, tell me, u cos theta itself, no doubt, and what is V sin theta? Can you tell me what is V sin theta? Here also, you will get two equations, Vy is equal to zero plus g into Time of descent. Time of descent. Okay. Descent. This is the portion of descent. Or which is equal to u sin theta upward g downward time. Total time of flight. Okay. Like this you will get two equations. You may write two equations but from both equations the same effect, same magnitude. And on taking both of these values, the values will be equal to u sin theta. The modulus of Vy will be equal to u sin theta. If this u sin theta is 50 meter per second, surely both of these equations will give the same magnitude of u sin theta. No change. Both of these equations will give the same magnitude u sin theta because as the body moves up, suppose this is 50 meter per second, as it moves up, becomes 40, 30, 20, 10, 0. Then as it moves down, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, comes back to the ground, falls in the ground with the same speed of 50 meter per second. No change. Clear? Okay. Go through the class one or two times, then it becomes perfect. The magnitude of both of these two equations will be same. No doubt. Okay. So, this is projectile motion. So, how can we define projectile motion? Now, we are explaining projectile motion in detail. Initially, we have written projectile motion. At first, we have said that a body projected with an initial velocity u making an angle theta to the ground and thereafter it moves under the influence of gravity is called as a projectile and its motion is called as a projectile motion. Clear? The motion is called as a projectile motion. And then we have drawn the projectile motion and considered initial point, a point during the upward motion, maximum height, a point during the downward motion at the point of fall. 
Okay, each and every point we have seen the velocity vector is resolved into two points, two components, horizontal and vertical. We have seen since there is no effect of gravity, okay, how you write? The initial velocity may be resolved into two components, ux is equal to u cos theta in horizontal direction and ui is equal to u sin theta in vertical direction. There is no effect of gravity in horizontal direction, so u cos theta remains constant throughout the motion. But since there is the effect of gravity in vertical motion, u sin theta begins to decrease as it moves up and becomes zero at maximum height. And thereafter, it increases from zero and on reaching the ground, the value becomes u sine theta itself. Once more, what happens to u sine theta? As it moves, since there is the effect of gravity in vertical direction, u sine theta begins to decrease as it moves up and becomes zero on reaching the maximum height and increases from zero to u sine theta as it moves down and increases from zero to u sine theta as it moves down, whereas u cos theta remains constant throughout the motion. Okay, that is a, a projectile motion is the combination of two motions. At each and every point we have seen two components of the velocity vector. Here also there is vertical component, but the magnitude becomes zero. That is the only thing. In all other points we have seen, each and every point, the velocity will have two components, x component and y component. And the x component makes a uniform motion, correct? U cos theta towards right, u cos theta towards right, u cos theta right, u cos theta right, u cos theta towards right. That is the horizontal motion is a uniform motion. Whereas, whether the vertical motion is uniform, no, vertically upward is retardation and vertically downward is acceleration. Therefore, finally, we will conclude that a projectile motion is a two-dimensional motion. A projectile motion is a two-dimensional motion, which is the combination of, you may write, a projectile motion is a two-dimensional motion which is the combination of a uniform motion along horizontal axis and a non-uniform motion along vertical axis. Non-uniform means retardation in vertically upward direction and acceleration in vertically downward direction. Such a motion, which is the combination of two motions, is called as a projectile motion. Clear? Okay. So, projectile motion is the combination of two motions. It is a 2D motion. A uniform motion along horizontal axis. And a non-uniform motion along vertical axis. Non-uniform means both acceleration and retardation. Upward motion, retardation. Downward motion, acceleration. Clear? This motion is called as projectile motion. Okay? So, hoping all of you understood what is projectile motion. Today, we have defined the projectile motion. In the coming classes, we will discuss the equations related to the projectile motion. Okay. So, till the next class, study the topic very well. The next class is the continuation of this topic. Without knowing what is projectile, we cannot go to the equations and other problems. Okay, numericals. So, hoping all of you understood this very well. And winding up, this is our channel, this is Gallery, Asha Binu. See you.